and now we're going to move into materials and we'll focus on a three channel uh, operation for now and uh, we'll come back to a nine channel so okay so under a three channel uh, we're going to use the three channel material maker uh, component and if I zoom in here we, we have a little bit of information just to help folks along but the, the very first thing we're going to need is a SPD input and so uh, this is just a, simply a file path and I have uh, you know you can set a file path and in this case um, I'm going to use uh, this Macbeth 3 which is one of the ones you can download off our site so that text file now is being read into the Lark we're going to set the source interval I know it's a 5 nanometer so I'm going to set that to 5 um, we're going to give it a name uh, th this one I know is Macbeth 3 so I'm going to set that and then uh, roughness and specularity I'm going to leave those as defaulting to 0 for now but you can you can certainly control that remember in radiance that it's going to be 0 to 1 uh, for material type because we're doing a 3 channel uh, or I'm sorry um, uh, I should say for material type we're doing a plastic here so if I hover over this one is plastic so we just set this um, slider to one the channel type because we're in the three channel series first nine channel we're gonna set this to zero okay so uh, we're good to go um, it's it's automatically running and you can see in the channel output we're getting what we'd expect is it's interpolating across the uh, the visible spectrum and outputting um, three numbers for a radiance material and because we're it looking at this three channel uh, mat three if we look at that it's telling us where on our uh, C drive it's putting it and you can see that Lark is actually going to generate a materials folder and it's going to take the name and it's going to stick it in there um, and if I look at what if I read from that file path what it's outputting uh, it's giving me a radiance material so and you can see it's it's a void plastic right now we're defaulting to a void in terms of the uh, modifier but um, by all means uh, you know you can come you can right click into the code and you know you can um, uh, you could search void and you could change this right so all of this is again open source and feel free to make changes and share your changes would be great okay so we just made a we used lark uh, to convert a spectral power distribution we wrote a material for a plastic uh, Macbeth 3 material so we're gonna go a step further and we're gonna do glazing now uh, you'll see right now uh, the the component showing red and on the out it's uh, we can see that it's it's looking for a file path in nine times out of ten this will be red because the file path is broken so I'm gonna set one file path and I'm gonna use this fourth in Madison which is the building uh, that CGF lives in in Seattle and this is the glazing of that building based on optic six so now that's working so we set the that path I know it's a five nanometer uh, source interval based on optic six I have a name that I've inputted uh, the material type is zero because uh, now we're using glass so we we change that slider to zero and then for the channel type we're still on three channels so it's going to be zero so this is doing one step further in this channel output um, this is actually uh, got a transmissivity calculator which um, I guess if I look that up um, in in the code uh, let's see so we have a function in here that's going to convert transmittance which is what is outputted from um, uh, uh, what we're getting out of that spectral grid data and we're going to convert it to transmissivity to make um, radiance uh, read it correctly when it when it runs it so that's an extra step that when you set this material type to zero for glass that it's going to do that so it's something to note that you do want to be careful what your settings are so then we're still in material three, so it's outputting a file path of that dot rad, or, uh, dot rad, 
and then here's um, uh, what that looks like. So now this doesn't say plastic anymore, it says glass. It's inserted that name and the transmissivity numbers. So we'll, I guess at this point, uh, I will show you where this is going in a sec. We'll just keep going with the sky component and that'll kind of complete our materials for uh, three channel and we can move on to running a simulation. So there's really two steps to building a sky and the first one is actually going to be using converting our spectral power distribution um, same way we just did for glass and plastic. So uh, we need a file path and in this case um, uh, I'm just going to do this here but uh, one of the uh, files that we had you download from the tutorial site for Lark is this Daylight Series SPD. And we have um, a few of these files, one for a 5,000 Kelvin, 7,000, and 25,000. And uh, these are um, uh, created using a, um, uh, an Excel spreadsheet from uh, Rochester, the uh, Daylight Series spreadsheet, where you just enter a temp. Kelvin temperature for the sky and it will actually output, um, let's see if I can uh, show you, uh, um, it's going to look similar to what we've seen before which it's uh, uh, going to give you a nanometers binning in 10 nanometers so you can see we're going from 300 to 310 and then the numbers are, uh, this time you can see are actually not just 0 to 100, they actually extend, some of these values are over 100 so what Lark is going to do is actually normalize those uh, and um, so that they're 0 to 100 and then it's going to, um, uh, well actually it's going to normalize at 0 to 1 because Radiance wants all of its numbers to be 0 to 1. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. Excel Daylight Series Cal. So that's what we're using and so I've set this to true and so that's automatically going to, even though I'm putting in 10 on the source interval, which we just saw it was in 10 nanometers. Uh, this is going to override that and make it 10 anyway, and it's then going to normalize it 0 to 1. Okay, so uh, if we, again, I'm not defining, I might define a name here, but you don't have to. Um, actually, don't bother. Uh, the roughness specularity, no, you don't need that for a sky. Um, material type, so here now we have it set to 2, and again, 2 is sky. Uh, and then channel type, um, we're still doing three channels, so zero. So here's our channel outputs, and then we go to uh, step two. And step two is gonna, we're gonna read that. Um, now, now we're actually using the build spectral radiant sky component, or spectral sky component. And we're gonna start out by reading our uh, spectral uh, output. Um, the channel type is the same, so I, you know, I'm just using the same uh, channel output to feed into this that I used to feed into uh, the material component. Okay, so um, we've got our latitude, longitude, time zone. All of this is being read live from when we um, split and parsed all that data using Honeybee and Ladybug. So that's useful. Um, and there, there's other tools and ways to do this. This is just one example. So uh, really taking advantage of that to get a lot of this information. And that time zone um, here, uh, it's, it's going into the uh, coordinated use universal time. And it's going to convert it based on Jen Rendell uh, wanting time zone to be positive if you're in the north of the equator and positive if you're west of the meridian. Um, sky type, we defined all that um, month oops, uh, month, day, hour, that's all defined. Uh, uh, and then this is reading that global illuminance that we calculated. So because we're going to use Jen Rendell, um, uh, we're not going to input uh, the override, horizontal, direct, and diffuse. This is saying that you've got the ability to go out and measure that on your own, which we absolutely encourage, and it's built into it to do that. So when we run Gen Rendell, something to note is that uh, you're, if actually I hover over it, it's going to tell you that it's um, to place Gen Rendell dot exec in your C Lark materials folder. So uh, this is um, uh, open source program in the DASIM. 
Um, you can run it through DaySim, or in this case, uh, we've just set it up where it wants to go look for that program in, in this directory. So if you just copy that out of the DaySim bin folder um, into this uh, Lark folder, um, you'll be good to go. And it's yeah, the C Lark materials. And I'll just show you. Um, so, so here it is, is the Gen Rendell. And you, you'll find that in the, if you go to C, DaySim, I believe it's the bin. Yeah, so that's it. So if you just copy that file, that's one way to get there. Okay, so when we're ready, uh, we hit true. And it ran. And what it's going to do is it tells you the current directory. It gives you the sky name. So in this case, it's telling us it's March 21st at noon, intermediate sky with a 20 Kelvin sky. The 20 Kelvin I, I inputted. And now I've already forgotten if we actually did a 20 Kelvin. We actually did a 5,000 Kelvin. So um, <laughs> let's just. Uh, be accurate about that. I'm going to hit OK. So it's going to just rerun it. Yep. OK, so here's the Rendell output. When it runs Gen Rendell, it's going to output the month, day, hour, and then give you the, uh, I believe it's the direct and the, sorry, yeah, the direct and the diffuse. And here we're just parsing those separately. And then, uh, because we're three channel, it's giving us the file path. And then we're reading it live. So it's actually creating a, uh, a Gen Sky radiance definition. And you can see that it's uh, entered the negative B, which is going to be our diffuse, and the negative R is going to be our direct. Lark is actually uh, computing these dynamically. Uh, as something to note is that. A lot of times when we run a sky, typically when we run a sky, we don't add color. Radiance defaults to a white sky, so these values uh, for all three channels, our G and B would be 1, 1, 1. Now, these need to all add up to 1, and because we're uh, never going to add up to 1 with a colored sky, we need to uh, uh, do some um, uh, basically uh, change the negative B and negative, well, yeah, the negative B. At this point, we're not changing the negative R to um, uh, compensate um, to for the white sky. So this is a sample output. And really, now uh, we've covered the gamut of uh, creating materials and sky definitions, which would then bring us over to simulate.